Hi, everyone, and welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, Senior Trainer and Support here at Digital Drafting Systems. The following is an excerpt from our What is New in Revit 2024 webinar. Please do not hesitate to drop us a line should you have any questions. Enjoy our presentation. Some new topography tools, which is really what I, I've been dying to show you guys. This is really cool stuff. We have a, quite a bit. I mean, we it's just so big that we're only going to be able to show you just like the tip of the iceberg. So rather than to read all of this, you guys can, can read this in the, in the uh, video that will be made available to you guys later. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, close all of this and close this one. Save changes to this. No, let's go ahead and the, the old demo one, which is the one that I have some uh, interesting things happening here. And let's go ahead into our 3D view. And let's take a look at this and how it works, okay? So let's go ahead and, and see the topology tools that are now being uh, completely uh, revamped in Revit 2024 by going into the massing and site. You will notice that there is no topography tools, but there is a topo solid tool, okay? And if we open it up, you have the ability to create from sketch, which we're going to do in uh, secondly, but we also have the ability to create from imports, okay? If we want to go to create from imports, we can then create it from an imported CAD, or if we have a CSV from a civil engineer, we can then use that in order to create the topology, uh, the topo solid. It's not even topology anymore, it's topo solid. So in order for us to be able to see it with the uh, create, from CAD, let's go ahead and import a CAD uh, topology or, or topography of um, um, drawing by going to insert. Notice that I'm not going to the linking, I'm going to the importing. Okay, let's go ahead into our little desktop here and let's go into our Revit 2024 webinar. And we have this building. Unfortunately, I wanted to use some some really interesting contours, but uh, uh, this came in for me without heights. So I went ahead and decided to use a different one, a little bit simpler and easier to use. So we're using the building a topo surface here. And we say, okay, now this particular topo surface is a topography surface okay, uh, that actually came from uh, a previous version of, of Revit. We are going to unpin it so we can then go ahead and move it aside and see what we can actually do with this. Let's go ahead and pin it back so we don't move it back in place. And let's see, as I said, what we can do by going into the massing in site, topology, create from import and create from CAD. Oh, well, allows us to then select the one we want. And then it tells us, okay, you have all of these layers. Which of these layers is it that you want to use for your topology? Well, Obviously, it's all the, the topo uh, layers, so the major and minors, and we'll say okay to that. And at this point, you'll notice what happened. Okay, let me undo here for a second. By selecting this right now, it's it's a topography item, okay? But by actually switching it, it's no longer a topology item. It is now a topo solid, in which case I can come over here to the edit type, and I can go ahead and go ahead and duplicate it if I want to. But in this case, rather than duplicating it, because it's actually going to have an effect on the other little uh, uh, item, the little house that we have here, I'm going to go ahead and switch the, the earth part, okay, from six inches to 10 feet, okay? Notice what this looks like. Doesn't this look like exactly like a slab? Hmm? And when I say, okay, and okay all the way out, obviously it actually grew for the for the section that I wanted, which is the earth section. But what I wanted you to also see is by selecting this item, the actual editing tools look more like slab tools, don't they? Okay, the reason why is because this is actually uh, in, in a way um, thought of as a slab by Revit, okay? So can we actually go ahead and change the heights here? Absolutely, I can come over here and say add points. And then the add points that we have, we have the ability to base it on what particular point. So in the elevation, where is it based from? We, all, we, have, we have the current level, which could be level one, level two, level three, whatever level it is. 
We have the project base point. We know that is, that's one project, one base point that it, the Revit has. We have the survey uh, point. This is a completely different point. Or we have the internal point, uh, an internal origin point. Okay. Rather than use any of those, because we happen to know that zero zero is going to be the project base point, let's go ahead and use the project base point as the elevation base. And we'll say that we're going to add another, let's say five feet to that. Okay, so the points that we're going to be adding now are five feet above this particular point. And what is that we are noticing? We're noticing that rather than giving us contour lines, it's actually triangulating. You know, notice that guys? But the triangulation, I do have to say, don't worry about it because it's actually at the point where you, at the moment that you're placing the points. Once you actually select from this to modify, you'll notice that it now has the contour lines, okay? These contour lines are actually going to be controlled through the actual type in the edit type where we have the contour displays and then you can define the separation between majors and minors or you can add additional points uh, or additional um, line values here that if you want so desire for this particular one. So remember, you have the ability to, con to actually control the placement or the separation of the contour, contour lines, but you also, as I said before, you have the ability to change all of these values, okay? Let's go ahead and say cancel that all the way out of here. So we saw now that we have the ability to, to control the separation of lines, great. Can we actually make perforations in this? Yes, but I want to show you an erroneous way to do it because it actually perforates the whole thing and there's really no way to actually control the depth of it. And that would be through the edit sketch. Okay, we know that we if we create an edit sketch and we create a shape inside of it, just like any slab type object would do, it would create a perforation. Okay, just like that, you, as you can see, there's no real way of actually uh, us telling uh, how uh, deep this is because it actually goes through the whole thing. You just created a, a, a hole on the, on the actual terrain. Let's go, switch this, this is a little hard to see. So let's go ahead and switch this over to uh, contrasting lines. It's a little bit easier to see. There, there are your contour lines. So this is the perforation that we made. Are there any better ways to actually doing that? Yes, there actually is. Let's go ahead into architecture first, and let's go into the component section and model in place. Okay, we'll go ahead and make sure that this is assigned to topology, so TOPO, and we have the topography, which is the old versions, and we also have the topo solids. We select the topo solids, which is the one that we want to actually uh, go ahead and have an effect on, and we'll say okay. Okay, we'll. Give it a name if you want. We're going to have going, going to go ahead and leave it at topo solid one. We'll say okay, and we'll create a void. Let's go ahead and create a nice void extrusion, and let's uh, create maybe a, a little pool here, little odd shaped pool. And there's our pool and there it is. And at this point, nothing's been done. Nothing's happening. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even look like it's actually uh, going in as you can tell with this line right here. That's because we would need to then pull the bottom section out. Still nothing is happening because not only do you have to actually make sure that this particular shape is actually in, intruding into the topo solid, but you actually have to cut it using the this particular tools right here, which we can open and say cut geometry. Okay, we're cutting the topo solid with this particular extrusion and there it is. So can we actually switch the, the depth? Absolutely. And this is what I was trying to tell you guys. We can actually go ahead and control the depth of these particular uh, items, which makes it a lot easier for us to actually go ahead and create what we want rather than just creating a perforation. The other way would be actually to go ahead into your massing inside. Let's go ahead and finish this creation here. <laughs> Excuse me. Would be to actually go to the massing inside and create an additional massing using the in-place mass, and then you can create your other shapes. Okay. Can you actually go ahead <laughs> and create one just from a sketch? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and get rid of this section in here. And let's get rid of this one also. 
I believe you have to unpin it first and then you can delete it. Beautiful. And let's take a look and see in this one, okay? Can we actually go ahead and create some berms in here? Absolutely. The way to do that would be to actually go ahead and select your particular piece, add points, okay? And then just go ahead and say, okay, from project base point, we're actually gonna go up maybe um, 2.5 feet. And we'll go ahead and place them at the edge here. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and place one here and one here and one there and one there and then let's say one there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and modify and there it is, a nice little berm already set in a shape that has been defined by us. Can we make a different shape than just a rectangle? Absolutely, by going to Topo Solid Create From New, you can use any of these tools here to create any type of shape that you actually desire for your topo solids in this particular case, okay? Can, uh, is, are there any other things that you can do to this? Absolutely. Let's say for example, that we wanted to create maybe uh, maybe a little a little something in here. Oh, let's do it in the back. Maybe we, we want to create some, sort of like a little pad up here, okay? That there is a tool for this in the massing and site here by selecting the actual uh, topology, you have your subdivision, okay? Now, the only thing that with the subdivision that I found is that it always goes from the surface, the top surface of the topo solid and goes up. There's no actual way to actually indent into this, into the actual topo solid. I, I find that a little bit cumbersome, okay? Once again, you have the same drawing tools that we, we are used to. Let's go ahead and top here so we can just create maybe a little one here. And I'm going to make it so it kind of saddles that berm. Okay, and let's go ahead and check mark. Why do I do that? Because I wanted you to see that it actually takes the shape of it. You see this? It's actually taking the shape. So it's actually following the contours of that particular berm. We can change the materials on this anytime we want by just switching over to concrete if you so want. And let's go ahead and uh, concrete lightweight. And there it is, okay? So with this, we have seen that you not only have the ability to go ahead and create a object from scratch, any shape you want, but you can also import and import them. You can modify them, not only import them as a, CS, as a CAD, but also as a, an Excel sheet, spreadsheet for uh, points that have been derived from a civil 3D topology uh, session.